guys, hope you're well and welcome to today's episode. Uh, we've got an awesome, awesome selection of miniatures for you to have a look at. Uh, first things first, a huge, huge thank you to Games Workshop for sending us the Wrath of the Soul Forge uh, King box. Uh, what a mighty box it does uh, contain a whole host of awesome models. You could say loads, models. You could say lots of traitors, but we won't go that. We won't be that harsh straight away. Um, so, re really, really good set of miniatures in this box. Without any introduction at all whatsoever you need to say it's got asriel in it the brand new plastic asriel which looks phenomenal uh absolutely phenomenal um on, on top of that as well you've got vashtor uh the dark mechanicus would you say it's dark mechanicus head i, I think oh he's, mate he's i don't care of... what anyone else says i'm calling it dark mechanicus dark like mechanicus, yeah dark mechanicus. i've been waiting for dark mechanicus models so i yeah. started, I started <laughs> collecting mechanica when i got back into the hobby um and like as soon as they well i started with imperial knights um when they we released that, started me down the Mechanicum line. Then Mechanicum was released as army. I was just like, oh, love of my life. I got Mechanicum in 30k. And I just I've been waiting for the Dark Mechanicum fix ever since. It's just been yeah. I've been but hyped for it. That if Vastra is a good example of hopefully what will I'd say come in the future, hopefully. I know yeah, we're all hoping for it. But um yeah. but if uh, he's anything to go by, then I'm sure everyone will be very, very happy. Uh you also get some other really cool models in the in the box as well. So uh, 10 intercessors, you know, what Marine Force would not be complete without some intercessors um really good kit obviously lots of options so really really good uh set of miniatures there uh some deathwing knights uh they can also be made as as, as term deathwing normal term deathwing terminators as well um venom crawler as well uh it's a class classic uh sort of re spidery awesome uh chaos model uh two obliterators uh and then we've got uh some cultists so yeah really really good set of selection of miniatures and we'll talk we'll talk through them anyway obviously but uh really really good set of set of miniatures yeah well so let's let's jump into that way we let, let's start let's start with Azrael because I think oh, that, that the main it, man himself the, the main man himself we've got to start with him and, um, and, and look at that winged helmet I know it's uh, it's it's it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's yeah <laughs> it's your 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 stereotypical noise that you make for everything that you love Whoa. which is <laughs> which is great <laughs> um so yeah so uh again big thank you to games workshop for sending us the box uh we we really really enjoyed working on uh the two characters for, from it uh for uh to, for this uh, video and obviously for the for the pre uh preview day uh or pre-order day um so uh starting off i think he's he's really really nice to see that they're nodding really honorably to the original model but also oh, yeah. making him primary so i think that's one of the big things that um you know especially for such an iconic character you know, you don't want to get the mix uh, too, too off balance in one direction or the other. You've got to keep that heritage that Dark Angel players and, and, and collectors will absolutely love. And at the same time, you know, modernising it and push, keep pushing the envelope and pushing forward. Uh, and I think this does a phenomenal job of it. I actually, you know, I normally have like a little thing I want to pick out as, oh, I love this little detail or that. Honestly, I'm actually kind of blown away by, by pretty much all of the model. Um, I don't really have a single favourite thing in him. I love everything. Yeah. So I don't know a huge amount about Dark Angels. You know, I, you know, I know when um, kits came out um, and like when they got the flyers, when they got those Terminators. But, you know, it's just by not knowing anything about them. I look at this model and there is no doubt who he serves. Yeah. Like every single thing about it is just in. Yeah, it just it just screams Dark Angel to me. Yeah. Um, you know, I love the Watcher holding the scabbard. He's I awesome, really yeah. like the design of the power sword. I think the combi bolt is fantastic. We're gonna talk about that because that's a huge trigger point for a lot of people. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. care where the ammunition feeds in, yeah. it feeds ammunition in, and that's all I need. Yeah. We're talking about small propelled rocket technology. Yeah. I don't care how it feeds in. Yeah, um, it's true. Although that does sort of counterpoint again, a lot of time I do be the realism guy of like, eh, yeah. you know, I'm suspending my disbelief. But, you know, like I love the um, iconography on the chest and on the tilt shield and on the banner and on top of the banner. Yeah. Uh, you know, as I said, it's on the sword and it's on the little um, like the little gold reliquary he's got hanging from his belt. It just, it just everything about it, I just honestly think is is pretty amazing. I, you know, I don't even have a negative. You know, we often talk, we're talking about how I'm usually this little thing I'll nitpick over. Maybe I didn't quite like this. Yeah, yeah. Quite like that. On this guy, I've kind of, I've not really got anything I don't like. Arguably, the space on the on the circular detail on the back of the backpack, you probably <laughs> could, put, could have put another Dark Angel symbol on. I, I like, always I said this. I said this <laughs> you've got keys angle. on the back of the model when you look at the keys on the back of the watcher. Like, yeah. when you look at the back of the model, you've also got um, you can see the wrist detail where it's again it's got the winged sword and uh, skull sword and shield you can see that like 
I, I, I would say I'm lost for words, but I have too many words. You, you said you said loads, which is great because it just shows how how good they've done at creating the the new rendition of the miniature. Um, yeah, look, the gun for a start looks looks great. They, they've solved that thing that obviously was a bit of a bit of a, I say a meme, but it was a bit of a thing that people obviously spoke about um, about the previous previous iteration of the the, the lines raw. But um, but yeah, I'm really looking cool forward one. to the next one having the bolter feed down the top. Yeah, like, that's get changing, like gravity keep changing bolter. the location. I want a uh, Garen style Garen thumb of pushing bolt around it. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of my one of my favorite things about it is uh the, the pose is it's very, very stoic, which I think suits Azrael as a character extremely yeah. well. Um and at the same time I love the subtle movement of the of the ta- of the tab or the cloth work. It's subtly moving in yeah. the direction of the of the in that golden angle that you've got at the front of the miniature, which I think works extremely well. Um the same as and the, on the watcher as well. It's, yeah, it's moving yeah. just nicely on him. Yeah, the tilt on the banner, or just marrying them uh, to the to the tilt of the cloth, it just shows the movement of the piece as well, which I think is really nice. Yeah. Um, my my one of my favourite things, and just to sort of talk about colourway first of all. So obviously Adam from the team that has, has painted this. Um, when we had a bit of a discussion about it initially, the thing that we really, really, you know, me and Ad both massively, and then yourself as well, obviously into sort of like early editions, and really remember like the early editions. Yeah. One of the one of the things that that Ad proposed and Ad said was, look, you know, um, I love obviously the the way the dark was painted however for me dark angels is kind of like second ed storm of vengeance and if anyone yeah. remembers the storm of vengeance artwork on that staircase with them all firing and shooting um their armor's slightly darker um yeah. and, and, and that's gone for a, which a, is a, rare for old editions <laughs> it's it normally is, more much more vibrant. It, it is yeah exactly that is that is a very very uh very true point um uh but the but that artwork um was the kind of like the the point where we were like right well i think we'll use that as a reference and basis for the model and that shows as i said a much much darker palette for for him um obviously you Using things like Caliban green um, and colors like that to just for the for the main color, but then yeah, maybe so may, maybe adding just, a just bit to of, jump bit in black for people in. who are who are watching. Um, just for a quick reference, if you're going to paint it more in the box art style, you'd be looking more towards your warpstone glow and your moot greens for your highlights to go that really vibrant green. Yeah. Um, for these guys, you know, it's it's Caliban green, black mixed in. You can hedge more towards the almost um, sybarite, cabalite, correct, yeah. and gorse blaster green style greens. The correct. Th- yeah. Like, and it just gives you that slight different change. Yeah, and, and that's exactly the, the the approach and the palette that I went for on this, and I think that that's really good. Keeping the red really vibrant and saturated, like on the gun casing, uh, that obviously the wings on the lion helm were a little bit darker as well. So the, yeah, again, the red accents to contrast against the green. One of them is very saturated, obviously the gun casing on the lion's raw, but at the same time, uh, then obviously darker on the on the plumes on the on the on the helm as well. So you've got a really nice selection of red tones to contrast and complement yeah. the, the the green. Um, but yeah, re- really, 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 really love, love the execution. Super clean, obviously. The approach that Ad's, Ad's taken to painting it, and he, and he thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the, the, this model. Like he, he, he said from start to finish, uh, absolute pleasure to paint. Like there wasn't an, an ounce of detail on there that was a bit of a pain or difficult to ac- execute or access or anything like that. Like the the yeah. build of it's really nice as well. What? Um, I think yeah. the re- the reason why um, he wanted to he chose the the helm over the bear head is purely because I think it's such an iconic bit of, of yeah. war gear that he's carrying. I'll do exactly the same. Um, and he and he's wanted to. Include Include the, the helm and have the watch. What happens country. with the helm if he's not wearing it? Because I've not seen obviously the bits on the model. The watcher um, carries it. Oh, awesome! Yeah, That's so cool. the, the watcher can carry it. Um, so, so which is quite good. The original, the, the metal version of Azrael, the previous iteration. Yeah, which is the um, one I remember. Yeah. The watch is carry, carrying the helm as well. In his arms, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, but then, then this one, you get the option of him either carrying the scabbard or carrying the carrying the lion helm, which is great. Yeah. Um, so, that's yeah. A nice, so, that's a nice little bit of alternation you can do with the model as well. Because, you know, it's, as we said, we switched the color schemes slightly, which I think is just a great way of adding. It, I think it goes back to, you know, we get asked a lot about color schemes. Um, this is kind of proving, like, you don't need the exact same greens. Like, you can paint your model green and it will still look like a dark angel. It doesn't well, have yeah, to be there's, the exact there's whole, one every time. There's a whole host of ways of doing it. Um, yeah. And I think um, little bits of swapping with some of the head swaps or as you said, the watcher swap, but you know, you can, you can really make the model your own and still have it be the chapter yeah. just with little tweaks. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. One little, uh, one little sort of not, I say Easter egg, but not Easter egg, but obviously the the helm on the base is spoilers. Uh, yes, no spoilers. But the, the the helm on the base is is as well is it's a fallen helmet, which is really really cool. So to back back uh, as real up, we have uh, some of these fine friends in some intercessors. Now the intercessors that um, that we're going to show obviously for this uh, are, are ones that were painted uh, quite a while ago for one of our as a client project, but really really awesome uh, colorway that's been done on them. So there are some blood ravens which were painted by Mike. 
um really nice set, set of miniatures uh the intercessor kit Ed, really really cool kit um i think yep. probably one of my favorites from the primaris range i think love it i love it i love the assault marines i'm sure i'll love every primaris kit that comes out um you know they're, they're not necessarily as individually posable as the older kits no um but i like the extra space that you can have for painting detail for yep. bits of weathering i like the increased scale next to imperial guard yeah imperial yeah. guard models like you know we've got a little bit of scale creep across the entire games workshop range but you know with with the bigger models i would i want to say it's both a little bit more forgiving if you make mistakes because you've got yeah. more space to clear it up but it also gives you more space to show off if you want to do little scratches maybe put some more transfers on if you want to stick purity seals because you know in the past i've gone through phases of wanting purity seals on everything versus on nothing um when you've got a bigger body to work on you can add a little bit more detail a little bit easier yeah. and at the end of the day you can do a lot of weapon swaps with original uh, with with firstborn and primaris yeah. and the hands don't look out of place no it's exactly, like the same right. scale just yeah. literally just take one weapon and stick it on another and it still works yeah they, they are really really good and I, like I said i do like the fact that they have the different um ammunition loadouts obviously for them all yeah. the interchangeable magazines is really cool as well so that's a nice little detail uh or option on the kits um but yeah they, they, they're you know really really great i think uh, probably a cornerstone kit of the primaris range like everything kind of stems from that that infantry kit if that makes yeah. sense um, if, if you're looking for inspiration on how to paint them as well you know we've got over 30 different space marine chapters yeah on almost all on primaris yeah on our patreon at the moment you know yeah. we've got some blood angels uh some blood ravens dark angels you know we've got well we've got every one of the first founding for have one of the first foundings chapters um, chapters yeah yeah so i mean as i said like we're, we're constantly going to add to that as well so we're always going to be adding different and sort of obscure chapters and things like that because we always get asked for different sorts of tutorials but yeah if you're interested go check them out um backing up those lovely lovely intercessors we we also got some deathwing knights uh that some we've thick boys. Uh, some thick boys yeah um so yeah please these... joe don't hate me i know you love dark angels but yeah. <laughs> they're just they're just thicker than normal terminators you know they've got more they've got more bulk they've got more bulk yeah um the the the, the these ones that we're going to be showing are obviously painted by by uh darren one and team members and uh like i said a really really great kit I, I you know i've always had a soft spot for dark angels um obviously yeah. my main love will always be blood angels but like but dark angels we shared a codex back in the day so they're kind of like a brother from um, from another mother but um but really really great uh great sort of chapter and also the uh the, the kits have just so many awesome little details on them that you can spend oh, yeah. absolutely ages painting um i think the, the flexibility of the kit between the regular deathwing terminators and the deathwing knights is great like you know i know we said posing wise they're not maybe as posable as earlier iterations of terminators but i still think you get really great selection of different characterful kind of poses in the kit that's available yeah i mean um, like looking at these guys you know we've got somewhere the out with the may uh with the sensors on a half yeah. and you've got the storm shield you've got some closed in you've got ones with weapons out you know you've got you've got a decent amount for what are quite static models you know you've got posability yeah. on the waist to get like rotation side to side yeah yeah i mean the, the shields are massive on them as well and, and the thing is yeah. like for example the guy in the middle you've got a really nice uh a really nice kind of like a wide open stance pose which if you put live painting open pose models he's fun super fun to paint oh yeah um but then like you know if you've got a shield in front i think the approach to have would probably be to just remove the shield and then uh and then obviously do that as a sub assembly and then just attach that on afterwards yeah. you know um i think the basing is great as well you know just getting something different that's not just gravel or not just like you know um just sand dry brushed you know this doesn't have grass or tufts or anything but it's a really simple scheme that really makes it cements it in you know it's like it's green marble with red um red grouting and vein work yeah just makes it like you know they're supposed to be in a bit of on the rock almost yeah that's that's per that's exactly it and that, that i love the i love the red uh grout as well it's just something totally yeah. different um the green marble it's just a bit of accenting that like yeah. ties in you know well as we said with Azrael and his helmet we've got that red on the helmet you've got yeah. red on the gun well these guys it's only on the half of the weapon and on the sergeant it's on the um the iconography on the knives on his on his uh belt and yep. a little bit the lenses but it ties the base to the top and if you're doing another dark angels force where you've got red bolters red lenses and everything it's just again it's just another way of tying them all together and we do actually again uh, have a tutorial for this exact basing on patreon which is great yeah it's a really really fun tutorial and if you're looking to do different marble effects you can you can check that out as well because you can you can always alternate colors and things as well yeah. which which works really well <laughs> uh so to, so to lead the uh the the more evil nasty side of this uh of this box uh you know you've got the the main main man himself Vashtor. um i when I first saw it, I, I genuinely, genuinely couldn't believe that we were getting a model finally. That it's represents. incredible. Yeah. it's. I love that the wings do nothing. 
Yes. It's just fabulous. That is just like to me, that's just, well, A, that's just Mechanicum all over. Here is a pointless augmentation that doesn't do anything, except for in this case, he can flap some things or some, fl- some blades of death. Like, you know, they look pretty, maybe they pretty, don't... They look, they look nasty, lethal, end, though, but they don't but... articulate particularly well. Like, you know, okay, we've, so we've got movement side to side and up and down. <laughs> I, if I was a Mechanicum person, I maybe would have tried to go with, I don't know, like a gun. Or something that has a slightly better reach. He, he does elsewhere. have a, he does have like a flame weapon in his claw. So like, yeah, he, he, you, know, you have got some some like he ability. looks insane. I just I love the wings for that. Like it looks mental and deranged, and that is all of what the Dark Mechanicum is about. I you know, yeah. I, I, I whenever I think of Dark Mechanicum and like whenever I I, I always would I, I always imagine what kind of like Geiger inspired kind of like miniatures would look like yeah. and dark mechanicum for me is kind of like what i would when i think of like that kind of like style of of of, of art and style of stuff that i've seen for science fiction but dark mechanicum i think is like perfect for that um and it kind of kind of has a little bit of a nod to that in some areas like with the sinew and the skin and all that kind of stuff but yeah. um but yeah i think it's a it, he's, he's a phenomenally like model and he's quite big as well as a miniature like he's quite yeah. quite menacingly like sized as well so Ooh. when you put put him against like uh, intercessors or put him against kind of like he's Asriel. huge yeah even as real like you've got that yeah. you know he towers um, over him yeah he's he's, he's, he's a pretty sizable miniature which is which is quite cool and the base is really cool as well it's got some really cool details um so yeah, so as I had wanted to approach this kind of similar to the kind of color scheme style of of of, of the box art kind of style, um, and then look at look of it. But um, I think on the skin tone, we, we sort of changed this palette a little bit, so it's a bit more uh, pale in in um in its uh, in its uh, sort yeah. of finish. Um, but, Makes it a bit more stretched. Uh, yeah, very very much so. Very much. One thing that is quite funny is the eyes. So, so Ad was painting the face, and he brought it in to just show sort of kind of show around the, the office what he was doing with it. And immediately when I saw it it reminds me of general grievous from star wars like this just the way that he's got like that that face it's that plate. sunken style yeah yeah it's it's really really cool like uh it's a very like really cool like in, almost very menacing kind of like biomechanical kind of like construct that he is and it's yeah. it just reminded me of him quite 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 massively so so yeah cool. something has just struck me right um and it actually goes back to what you're saying about the skin the skin on this guy is super stretched right yeah i'm now trying to think about almost almost all of the normal mechanicum the, the good the good ones i good say mechanicum, yeah uh, that's where they have skin it's not stretched it's often sallow it's sunken but yep. like you've got like the faces are dripping like they've got excess skin that's not filled out anymore with fat or blood it's got machinery behind and thinking about all the mechanicum stuff it has this taut stretched skin now yeah okay it's, it's suppressing the dark energy like it's trying to contain dark energies and their engines yeah but i do think that's quite a cool differentiation between like the good mechanic and we're a bit drippy. <laughs> the, the bad guys are like super stretch. Um, but no, it's it's I like the fact that he's got pegs holding that skin in place on his yeah. head. Um, you know, it's it's both both sets of mechanicum arguably have stuff that's a bit useless. Yeah. You know, does Belisarius call really need as many mechanoid tendrils coming off him as he does? Yeah. Like yeah, he's got quite a few. Maybe in the in the name of efficiency, you could have less because that's that's the, that's theoretically the driving aim of all Mechanicum, right? Is is that boost for efficiency? Yeah, yeah. flesh is weak. We're getting rid of it for more efficient things. And then this dude is like, yeah, but I've got like six engines on my back. That's efficient. Sorry, six exhausts. They're not even engines. There's probably one engine, but it just needs to vent so much awful because they're all inefficient. But the, but the Dark Mechanicum almost don't care. They'll make it ostentatious and show off how much inefficiency they have. But they it's like, you know, look at how much uh, what they need to, to mimic even a fraction of our power. And he's like, hey, I don't care. I've got like blade wings and an engines coming out my back. You know? Like that they are like like you said, they're very I think they're more for show than for than for person proper use, maybe. Yeah, those wings still kill you. Yeah, they like... still kill you, but yeah, it's <laughs> like yeah. But um And those claws, whoa, they'll rip yeah. you apart. Yeah, they I mean they also I think I think one of the things I really, really liked is something that I've done on the base. It's it's you got some you mentioned mechanoids, but you've got some mechanoids coming out the ground yeah, and they've done this really cool kind of like orangey glow effect to tie in with the with the hammer and other glow, or it's kind of like subtle glow areas on the miniature, but um, but those like little mechanisms coming out of the base are really, really cool, nice little detail on them. Um, yeah. The metallics, like you know, uh, there's a lot of metals on here. You got like a, almost, I'd say, like a fifth, well, a kind of like forty percent skin, forty percent metallic, and then you got the armor, which is the extra kind of tone. <laughs> and then forty percent, who knows? I mean. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> like it, it's it's a really good amalgamation of different uh, yeah. objects to paint so like from a painter's perspective you've got i think there's a miniature to really get your teeth into and have some fun with you've got the fact you've got to paint mm, armor spiky, i wouldn't try and bite it yeah well the, <laughs> you've got you've got the skin that you definitely that definitely should have fun painting because it's obviously a different type of surface property um you've got all the metallics that you can put loads of interest into so rust and and de- detritus and you know it, you can maybe paint some a coppery tone or something Quite like that some... jewels in there as well for weeping skin correct i mean if he's aligned to nurgle there's lots of other things that you Ooh. can do as well on, on top of that um and then you've also got the armor oh. as well so you just made me think about devoting these to the different gods. I want a corn one of these. I don't even like corn. Look, I want I, a corn one of these. I'll always say everything looks good in red. So, you know, I'm, yeah, never, yeah. Gonna, I'm never gonna say no to that. But um, but yeah, like he's he's an, an, an awesome, awesome miniature. And, and again, uh, the, the build process for anyone who's interested, like um it's 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 really good to do the wings as, as sub assemblies. I think the, the model is quite open pose, which is really, really cool for, yeah. for, for I, I personally prefer painting things in single piece if possible with minimal sub assemblies. So for me, having just the wings to do separate and then focusing just on the overall body head and all those bits in what is one piece it just means you're not diluting your attention too much from when you're painting it i think there's another thing that we've kind of overlooked a little bit on this one as well like as a model um obviously he, he, he bash, bash get some blanches to in there well Do there, you get bashes there is that i was just going to say this guy would make an incredible iron warriors demon prince and if oh you, yeah if you if you maybe maybe if you got rid of the spiked wings and put some like thrusters on there like so, to represent wings or like some more mechanical kind of a jetpack or something yeah. it would make a phenomenal um uh like demon prince for iron warriors uh like the i mean they, they can fly with magic to some extent right well, yeah, demon princess yeah. like yeah there there is yeah you can those i mean they might you might you know fly. he's iron manning that flamer that is actually his thruster that could that is a very very good <laughs> and the hammer um oh, yeah. but the but that you could put like the warp bolter in the hand like that mm. you could change that to a different gun perhaps maybe in the hand so it's got really good opportunity to to be flexible for chaos uh, as well which yeah. i think is quite good so to, to back him up in the box we've got uh we've got a couple of really good good sets of miniatures which we're going to run through so probably one of my, my favorite kind of i'm going to say dreadnought like because it's kind of like in that kind oh, yeah. of vein but um the venom crawler like it, a phenomenal miniature uh obviously came out with a with the box quite a while ago i'm trying to remember the name of the box um is it shadow spear i think it came in originally i, I think that's i think that's i don't the, know i think that's the Nurgle, box that it, that it first first came out in there was with shadow spear the venom crawler um but again really really great model um you know it's as i said lots of intricate little details on it and the one yeah. that we're, we're going to be showing in the, in the in this episode is is painted in a really white uh porcelain scheme that we uh, that we uh done covered in blood. Of, yeah covered in blood it's definitely for it's it's a, an additional phase that we've done for for lawrence and the guys over at tabletop tactics um and it was one of the venom quarters that part of the the additional force we've done for that so again lawrence's scheme's obviously in white which is really cool for corn um and then it means that obviously the blood effects and things stand out really nicely on it but um overall as a miniature like i i think that it's it's almost it fits really well with Vashtor because it's got the very similar if you look at some of the sinew parts on the spidery yeah. bot from the body to the to the sort of abdomen, that stretch, you've got skin. That stretch skin um which which matches extremely well and got the spikes. Um, oh it's got a lot of spikes yeah it's a lot of spikes these and, are and, a pain to paint holding them with those spikes oh yeah. I would, I, I would advise get a glove. The base. Yeah, or yeah, a glove, yeah. yeah. Or, you know, get a, get a chain mail glove. Um, but Ben, who worked on it, um, really put a lot of time and effort into sort of like a lot of the, the, the technical, like little parts and bobs, like the detail on the armor panels, so the weathering. Yeah. Um, and for example, like there's little areas of verdigris on some places and uh, and the blood effects as well, as we mentioned. Like sometimes you can go a bit overboard with blood and overkill with it, to use a pun. But, um, but less it's, is a, more. it's a less. I less hate the phrase, kind of but less is more. Yeah. Build it up slowly. And you'll get an effect if you just throw paint at the model it will look like you've thrown paint at the model yeah uh, yeah it's it's, it's it's a good tip is to use like a, either use a brush and then use an airbrush and blast it with the airbrush on f- f- hold the brush and blast the airbrush onto the miniature or the area that you want to put the blood or you, it's a bit more messy but you can use a toothbrush which again you put the paint on it and then flick it with your thumb it, again if you another... are doing that my advice is to get a couple of bits of cardboard around where you're working build yourself an, or an empty box yeah do it in a box yeah, yeah you will sp- and get an apron i've yeah. done this in a white shirt far too many times despite knowing the mess it makes yeah and ends up with paint splatter again really cool miniature to go alongside uh to go alongside obviously vashtor uh and then to to back up uh those two well the brand new vashtor model and also the uh the the, the venom caller we've got obliterators which 
which for me, I remember the original ones back in the day, the, the tiny mm. little metal ones. And to yeah, see the yeah. progression of the oh, miniature. Oh, they were awful to put together. I loved them. <laughs> the but arms, they were awful to put the together. The arms used to come off all the time. But but fortunately, we've had quite a few renditions of them now um, through to these new plastic ones. And I think, again, like you look at the miniature, um, it has a lovely balance of skin and sinew mm -hmm. and metallic flesh and, and armor, which I think is a really yeah. great... Um, well, it's got a, a lot of that chaos armor, though, isn't like the, the trim. That trim can be a bit like prepare yourself that that does take a long time to paint yeah yeah exactly it, it, the thing is that when with when when painting chaos models trim is something that you just have to take as, as a given mm. like it, it, there is that the chaos models have a lot of it and i think that you really have to just push through and, and get that once that bit's done it's the models really really do come to life very very quickly uh so i'd, I'd always recommend to anyone get the main color on get your trim color on as much as it's a bit more arduous at first but get that trim color on first and then after following that all the other parts are a lot quicker and easier to execute yeah. um these these are these, these abyss uh were painted by simon uh, and they were done in empress children's scheme for for one of our clients really really cool super vibrant uh scheme uh An another great example of changing the paint scheme on this exact same model can yeah. make it like radically different yeah it, it, as i said like it's it's it, it i love the way that you've got the skin tones on these models but then you've also got that really sort of subtle pinkish hue on certain areas of it of the yeah. armor paneling and the black it's a very classic emperor's children kind of color scheme when you think when you, i remember yeah. one of the very first chapter approved in white dwarf where they talked about emperor's children and that pink and black uh chaotic side of the when they turned um it just it this summarizes it for me like it's i a think free, it's a really good mix almost of like emperor's children through the ages yeah whether yeah. it's a modern 40k reference of it's got a lot more of like the like a lich purple or a sort of like a, a sorry a lilac -y sort of purple where it's yeah, yeah. A lot more flat pastely and a bit more desaturated you've got like old school um empress children with a vivid pink um you know you've got as you said the the um older older white dwarfs where it is that more sort of skin tone style like yeah i do like that it's it's a huge mix yeah and, and as i said so, so i had a lot of fun working on this one because he's was, done uh, um he's done a custom service commission for this as well actually isn't he? he's gonna he's done a yeah he did lucius. he did a lucius we, we, we've done a lucius the eternal one it was uh to be done in this scheme as well which you know it's uh it, it was a lovely project to work on obviously creating a one-off bespoke model that comes with a certificate but um but the to to, to then get it to paint it in this scheme as well is also uh, was a real, real yeah. pleasure for him he really enjoyed it um so yeah um i do think though that the thing i really loved about the about the uh bit raters is that on the middle one it's got like almost the like that eye oh, which the is really great. cool love it it's it's a little thing like that there's there's little things like that do make a lot of difference to the miniature and it it kind of looks like he's mutated as well which i think is quite it was very in keeping yeah. with with uh with the Saneshi vibe that's going on with these guys so let's let's jump back so out of the two out of the two characters in the box like what what are your what's your favorite out of ashtor and, and asriel i'm assuming think... you're going to say one way well i'm assuming i know based on how, how i, I love ashtor i do because I, I have been waiting for Dark Mechanic for ages. Um, but I, I'm a sucker for a space marine. Like they're just cool. Yeah. Bashtor is also really cool. And I know my friends uh have already ordered are already ready to order and start a new army with them. So I'll be facing him a lot. But I just I just like a space marine with a load of iconography on. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I have to agree with you. Like, I, look, I love uh, chaos models, uh, like like anybody else. But I, I do, yeah, as I said, I, I, I think for me, the angle that I like it on is that as much as obviously it's it's Azrael and it's obviously Dark Angels. Um, I like the how well the uh the new model refers back to the old model yeah. and how much parity there is between two because i think you need to honor that narrative and on honor that um that kind of backstory because that's inherently oh, yeah. for me what makes 40k different from so many other things that are out there you know that 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 almost like um historical modeling but in the science fiction aspect i think that's one of the things i love the most so seeing that they've taking those details and taking those things that people instantly warm to on the miniature and use it on the new one is uh is is really important for me and and i, I hope a lot of other people obviously that, that that like the model but um but yeah like really really cool box uh you know if you're watching this then uh you know and you're considering picking it up then uh you're gonna have a lot of fun with the different sort of models that are in there um and uh yeah for me i think it's a it's a solid solid uh set of uh of, of army models plus also two really really cool characters oh yeah um so yeah so i hope you've enjoyed this episode i hope you've Thanks enjoyed for listening all the, all and watching the... 
yeah it's uh it, you know, all, all the all the models that are in here have been really fun to talk about and um you know once again i've got to say a huge thank you to games workshop for sending us a copy of uh the box in advance for us to to preview and to obviously paint the miniatures up add as i mentioned countless times already has had a huge huge uh, like fun time painting uh painting these miniatures and doing what he's done with them uh so let us know in the comments what you uh what you uh prefer out of the, out of the box do you like the dark angels or do you like the forces of vashtor yeah uh, be really interested to see your thoughts about the new miniatures and also what how you would paint them and what you would approach with, with doing them uh, so big thank you from me and from me of course as well thank you everyone and um, thank you to games workshop as well yes thank you very much and we'll, us a preview. we'll see you very 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 soon on the next episode take care see you later i feel like we need to, we need to put the dark angels traitors thing to rest like you know yeah it's, it's well, well yeah. yeah, we'll have to see, won't we? We're Maybe some know. of them are traitors, but let's let's be honest. When we look at the Horus Heresy, is there ever like none of the legions escaped untreated in some way? That is very you true. Know, there are yeah.